In these uncertain economic times, it's easy to be worried about protecting your wealth, your hard-earned savings, and your family's financial future. Plunging interest rates, the devaluating dollar, and political unrest constantly threaten what you have worked hard to earn and all that you own. That's why now it's more important than ever to protect your assets and have the money you need to make your dreams come true. Welcome to the Global Wealth Fortress Report with successful global entrepreneur and wealth preservation expert, Joel Nagel. Joel's helped thousands of people just like you protect what you have so that you can make even more and make your every dream come true. So, sit back and enjoy Joel Nagel's offshore expert advice on how you can live the good life at a great price, where the sun never sets on your financial fortress. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Global Wealth Fortress Report. I'm Joel Nagel. I'm speaking to you today from my offices in just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about the specific advantages of utilizing an offshore trust versus a domestic trust. And yesterday I gave a little bit of a background about trusts, where they came from, the fact they've been around for, you know, a thousand years or, or more. And, and so, you know, the results that you can expect from a trust, you know, it's, it really is tried and tested, particularly if it's, if it's drafted correctly and it's administered correctly. Normally when people are able to attack and go after trusts, it's because it, it's, it wasn't set up correctly. It wasn't administered correctly. Normally the, the grantors or people creating the trust uh, maintain too much control over the assets, okay? As I said yesterday, when you create an asset protection trust, you legally transfer assets from you. You used to be the owner, now you're not the owner. You might be the beneficiary. You might be able to receive a benefit from the trust. Your spouse, your children could, could also be beneficiaries, but you're not the legal owner. And if a court finds that you um, really maintain control, then it's as if you are still the legal owner. In other words, the trust is just a sham and it, it wasn't really set up properly, administered properly. And that's how, you know, trusts are attacked. But, you know, the, the, the courts that are able to attack trusts are in their jurisdiction. So if I create a trust in Pennsylvania and you attack it, you're going to come to a court in Pennsylvania and a judge in Pennsylvania is going to decide whether it was properly created, properly administered, whether assets in the trust can be attached or not. But what if I've moved the trust to a different jurisdiction? Let's say I've established the trust in the Cook Islands, for example. Now what? Is a Pennsylvania judge going to have any uh, authority or jurisdiction over the asset? Well, the simple answer is no, right? The, the situs of the trust is abroad. The assets are abroad. The control of those assets is abroad. And so a Pennsylvania court that would look at that would say, well, we don't have uh, jurisdiction. We don't have in personam jurisdiction, meaning jurisdiction over the person. And we don't have in re jurisdiction. Re is spelled R-E-S. It's Latin, meaning the thing. So we don't have jurisdiction over the person. We don't have jurisdiction over the thing. We can't hear the matter. So now the plaintiff, the potential plaintiff, has to go overseas, they have to go to the Cook Islands, they have to file a lawsuit in the Cook Islands where the laws are much more protective uh, of, of, of these types of trust structures. Now, this type of jurisdiction shopping is, is one benefit and it's a very important benefit. You, you may even um, think of it as the most important benefit, um, but it's really only the, the most important element if you're if you're very very concerned about lawsuits but there are many reasons that people create asset protection trusts and it's not just about lawsuits it could be about administering assets for a very very long period of time um, most u.s states have limitations on how long you can place something in trust normally it's for what's called for a life and being meaning for a living person 
uh, life in being plus 21 years. So you're talking about leaving assets to your children or your grandchildren. But what if you want to leave assets for your heirs for the next thousand years uh, to protect and preserve assets uh, and provide for education, health care, um, maybe money to, for a down payment on a house or seed money to start a business? What if, what if that was your goal and objective? Well, if that's your goal and objective, then we would look at jurisdictions where we could do that. We wouldn't look at a U.S. jurisdiction. We would look at a jurisdiction that had very long or infinite uh, periods where you could place assets in trust. So we talked about litigation. We talked about how long you want to hold something in trust. What about just investment diversification? You, you know, with the Global Wealth Fortress, it's not always just about the defense. Sometimes we talk about the offense too. Um, did you know that over 70% of the world's investments are closed to U.S. investors? You think, well, I'm an American, I'm free, I can invest in anything I want. But the reality is you cannot. Foreign investments are largely closed to Americans because of the long arm of the U.S. government. Um, the regulatory agencies such as the SEC regulate foreign entities if they offer their investments to U.S. persons. So most foreign companies, foreign mutual funds, foreign hedge funds, you know, they're closed to Americans, meaning Americans can't invest. But if you recall, I told you that when you create a trust, you're creating a separate legal juridical person. And that separate legal juridical person has the nationality of the jurisdiction where it's created. So going back to my Cook Island example, um, if I create a trust in the Cook Islands, then I have created a Cook Island person. And now that Cook Island person can make that investment into, let's say, a Malaysian hedge fund or you know, a European real estate partnership or a South American um, you know, startup company. You can do that uh, without interference from uh, the US SEC. So that's really an, another very important reason. Finally, I think the, the reason of just establishing financial accounts themselves. Again, if you go back, you know, uh, under the Obama administration, uh, we had something uh, called the foreign account, uh, let's see, FATCA, the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. Okay, it, it originally came about in 2010, but it took four or five years until it really came into uh, being enforced um, just because it was so uh, cumbersome from an IRS perspective to administer the, the FATCA regulations. Uh, but again, many, many countries, many banks, many brokerage houses, the simplest way for them to comply with FATCA was simply to fill out an affidavit that said, we no longer will serve U.S. customers. And that's what happened all around the world. You know, if you heard stories about Swiss banks kicking out the American clients or, you know, Cayman Island brokerage firms doing the same thing, well, it really had to do with FATCA and uh, them not wanting to have to go through the case-by-case uh, -case compliance involved. So it was much easier to uh, simply kick out American clients. So again, creating a foreign trust, foreign juridical person, it could reestablish these types of banking relationships. So let's just review. With foreign structures, we get the age-old protection of an English common law trust that's been around for 1,000 years or longer. We get the jurisdiction shopping of the jurisdiction itself, meaning the laws of that jurisdiction will apply. If somebody wants to sue you, they're gonna to have to sue you under that regime going to have to get on a plane, fly halfway around the world, hire foreign lawyers, and go up against you and your assets in a jurisdiction that's not pro-plaintiff, but rather is pro-defense. Then you're going to have the ability to open up foreign accounts uh, much easier and to make foreign investments. So those are just some of the important reasons that people choose when doing, when creating their own global wealth fortress to utilize structures in different jurisdictions. So <clears throat> tomorrow I'm gonna to talk a little bit 
about why some of the jurisdictions have proven themselves as becoming the most protective jurisdictions in the world. So they're the jurisdictions where most asset protection lawyers such as myself tend to, to create uh, these structures. I mentioned, um, I mentioned the Cook Islands already, mention the, them again tomorrow, but we'll also talk a little bit about some of the other jurisdictions. Belize is one of my favorites in, in this part of the world, uh, and we'll talk about some, some other jurisdictions as well. So until then, I wish you every happiness, health, and wealth that can't be destroyed or taken away by others. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining Joel Nagel and the Global Wealth Fortress Report, a whole new approach to asset protection and estate planning so that now you can live the good life at a great price where the sun never sets on your financial fortress.